Lauren with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art and I help beginner through professional level artists reduce stress while mastering animal art. Now in my last video I did a giveaway and the winner is Tani Anderson and you can thank her for this vibrant pink cockatoo tutorial. As always the outline, the traceable outline and the list of materials are down below. But I also want to announce before we get started that the Pet Portrait Commission course and art business courses that I've been talking to you about, I the official date that that will be uploaded to my masterclass is December 15th. A little bit later than I hoped, but I kind of been a little busy. And so that will be coming out then. And it'll be in the stallion and the main coon tier of my masterclass. All the links are down below to that. But guys, let's get started with our painting. So make sure your traceable has been transferred to your mixed media paper or canvas. And if you're using paper, make sure you tape it down. I'm going to mix up the colors bright aqua green and cadmium yellow and white. That's bright aqua green, white, and cadmium yellow. We'll be applying this color to our background that's above the branch, around, and between the birds. Now if you're new to my tutorials, anytime I'm switching colors and applying it, I'll make sure I tell you the exact colors that I'm using. And when it comes to the touch-up phase, which is at the very end, we will just be repeating all the steps and the colors that we've applied throughout this tutorial. And I really encourage you, I really encourage you to be as creative as possible, to make this your own, and to just enjoy the process and not even worry about the result. Now what I do when I start feeling Mr. Perfectionist creeping on up is I first acknowledge him that he's there and then I just ignore it. In my own personal struggle with this, I find that knowing that this is a tendency of mine, but it's not who I am and I can detach myself from Mr. Perfectionism, it really helps me and it may take a few seconds, it may take a few hours, but eventually it does go away and I can create art and be in that flow. Now for those of you who are currently struggling with thoughts of worry and anxiety or depression, five deep breaths really activates those mechanisms in our body that help us to refocus, to slow down, and to problem solve and be creative and think outside of the box. So take this time to take five deep breaths in and out and you'll find yourself, your mind and body, come back to the present. Now I'll tell you, this was an interesting painting to film because it was a super rainy day and the clouds were moving so fast and all the light was just changing constantly. So you'll notice that some parts of this tutorial get really dark, unfortunately, and then some get very bright. Thankfully though, it does get better as we continue painting. So I think our worst bout of this is right around now.
with a medium flat brush, a little bit smaller than what I brush I was just using. I'm going to mix up some raw sienna with some burnt sienna and more raw sienna than burnt. All right, so I'm going to just paint this piece of wood that they're this branch that they're on. And while that is wet, I'm going to see, I don't actually know if this is the color I want, but let's see. Yes, I'm going to work with it. I'm going to just mix in some white into that. Using the flat edge of my flat brush and with this color, we're going to create that wood grain pattern. So I'm just very loosely applying these horizontal lines across the branch. I'm going to try my best not to paint over the feet. And I'm also going to scatter this in a way that still allows that brown base color to shine through from the bottom. It would make sense that it's darker underneath where they're sitting. So I'm going to make it a little bit lighter on the outside.
Next, I'm going to grab a round detail brush and we are going to mix the colors phthalo blue and yellow. That's cadmium yellow. We want to make a dark green much darker than our background because we want it to stand out. And we're going to make some cool leaves. So that's cadmium yellow and phthalo blue and mix up a good amount because we're going to be adding quite a few leaves. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to create a line to where I want the leaves. So just starting out from behind this cockatoo, I'm going to bring it all the way up off the side of my canvas. And I think I also want like two on the left side. So I'll do like a curvy line here. And then one that goes up and all the way into the left cockatoo. And if you watch me, I'm just going to create this wider base around the leaf. And I know we don't see all the, all of it, but we want to have it wider down below here, this area, and then get thinner at the top. And then have these little cuts in the center on the sides. I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to start wide. And then I'm going to bring it in into that center line. And then another one with a little bit of a gap. And then I'm going to get a little smaller closer to that line. So this part is getting thinner. And we're not really seeing a whole lot on the right side. But I will start another one that gets a little bit smaller. I can even take this base out a little bit more and even make a separate little layer. And I'm just going to fill it in. I'm actually going to widen the center a little bit just by bringing out some of that green, just kind of widening it out. And then taking that off on more on the right of the canvas. All right, so we're going to do the exact same thing on the left side. I'm going to mix up some more of this green, except this time I'll add in a little bit of white. All right, going to start from the bottom and work up. I'm going to start on this one. And we have a bit of an overlap here. Hmm. Now, if I were to make another one of these, it would overlap too much. So to prevent that, I'm going to make a different kind of leaf. Going along the left and right sides of this stem line, I'm going to create these long, evenly spread out leaves. Closest to the stem, it's going to be really pointy and thin, but then it's going to get wider at the base of that leaf and then become thin and pointy again. And as we climb up the stem, these leaves are going to get longer. And I'm going to have a little bit of an overlap, but 
it's going to be a lot less than if we did one like that on this side. Now on the right side of the stem, I'm going to start creating a little bit of an overlap with the leaves, creating a bit more of a curve. All right, so now for this one, hmm, what shall we do? I wonder what's the easiest way to do that one. I think maybe the easiest way is just putting bigger leaves, but similar kind of, kind of technique, similar technique, bigger leaves. And then I'm gonna have them overlapping. So let's see, if I were just to trail this over top, I think we can do it. I think I'm going to bring them down behind the tree branch. And they're going to go off the side of our canvas. I'm just going to add another layer of green over top this leaf. What made all the difference in the world for this painting is just by adding tons and tons of layers of green over those leaves. It really helps it to stand out over top that light green background and really complement the pinks and reds in the parrots. Okay, so make sure you mix up enough green of phthalo blue, cadmium yellow, and if you need to, use a little bit of white. Now we're about to get working on our sunshine, but before we do that, you need to make sure your light green background is either dry or tacky. Well, I'm definitely gonna need some more yellow here because we are gonna be making a beautiful sunshine. So make sure you have a medium brush that's clean and damp. Actually, I'm gonna grab another one because mine is just too covered in green. I got a fresh medium flat brush I'm gonna use my yellow that's cadmium yellow and then some white with a little bit of orange so that's lots of cadmium yellow a little bit of white and a little bit of orange so your green background should be tacky oh dear mine's still a little wet 
actually, no, we're good. That just already had some green paint on it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more orange. I think we're good there. Let's test it out and see if that works. Yes, so we're gonna need to add a few layers of this. But all I'm gonna do to make this sunshine is I'm just gonna push down my brush as I twirl it, twist it around. It makes a really nice circle that way. I'll show you again. So I'm just gonna place my brush down and just twist it around. The, the more you push on your brush, the wider it gets. And then you can just fill that in with your, with your paint. Awesome. Now we got to go back to that tree branch because we got to add a few more low lights in there. And especially because we're still waiting on those leaves to dry. So I'm going to use my detail brush for this. Make sure it's clean and damp. I'm going to mix up the colors black and raw sienna. We want to have this be a really dark brown so that we can create that oval shaped knot in the wood. I'll just do one and then I'm going to add in more raw sienna just to create those pretty strong low lights beneath the bird's feet. And now for some highlights, I'm going to mix up white with raw sienna. All right, you want these to be now lighter than any of the browns that you've added. Over top some of the lines we applied with our medium brown to create that wood grain pattern, I'll apply this color. And to make that knot look like it's somewhat elevated, I'm going to create a ring around it with this color. These lines don't have to be perfect and in fact it kind of looks more natural when they're not perfect straight lines. Coming out from this ring I'm just going to add a few lines to make that blend into the branch just a little bit better. To make that area beneath the right cockatoo I'm going to use some raw sienna just so it nicely blends that ring to the wood a little bit better. I want to lighten that up so it's not such an extreme gap there. And I want to fill that in with black. I actually want to keep that pretty dark. All right, so now it's time to create a light green lighter than the green we used for our leaves. So I'm just gonna add more yellow and white into this green. All right, so now let's do some funky, cool highlighted designs on our leaves. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on this one and I'm going to create a line in the center, right in the center of this leaf.
To make this leaf more interesting, I'm going to add lines to the outer edge of the leaf as well as connected to the stem. Kind of like these long, thin rectangles that are coming from the stem out and then also from the outside of the leaf in. Now we're not done with this light green because we're going to add some highlights to the other set of leaves on the left side. We're going to really make them pretty strong on the right side of both stems and then just a little bit very loosely applying to the left side of the stems. On both sides. I'm not really filling in per se, I'm just kind of laying this color over top so it doesn't cover up all the green. Just going to touch this one up a little bit more. All right, so now we're going to move on to our cockatoos. We're going to start with our darkest values first. You'll find that the color I come up with is permanent red, white, burnt sienna, and a little bit of black. That's permanent red, white, burnt sienna and a little bit of black. Anywhere in the bird feathers where we see a shadow, it is like a dark red or a little bit of a gray. That's where we'll be applying this color. Thank you. 
All right, so let's start branching off, getting a little bit lighter now. So I'm gonna mix up some of my permanent red and white. And I'll mix up a dark pink. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more white to that. Red goes a really long way, you don't need much. And I'm gonna switch brushes now. I'm actually going to go to a medium flat brush again. Now this is how I like to paint. I like to gradually progress from dark to light using lots of layers. And so this next layer is gonna hug. I like to call it a hug because it'll be over top or just right next to the previous dark layer. Now there will also be other places like around the parrot's faces that we'll be adding this color where it's nowhere close to a dark red but it's kind of like the base dark layer for our lighter colors that we'll add over top. There's a little bit of dark red that I actually missed and I don't want to forget it. I'm just going to go back to this dark red and burnt sienna and black. I actually just want a little bit of black because there's a really strong low light right there where I don't want to forget. Little quick pause and now we'll go back to that color. I actually think that flat brush is too big, so I'm going to move to a smaller flat brush just so I can cut into some of those dark reds. I'm just going to mix up some more of that same red.
All right, now a little bit lighter. I'm gonna actually add more white to my paint palette because I'm running out. Now we want it lighter, a lighter pink than what we just used. All right, so we're pretty much gonna fill in all the rest of the white with this color. But if you notice, oh, that's not quite light enough. It's with this layer that we're not only trying to cover up the leftover white, but we're also starting to create and define those feathers. To do this, what I'll do is I'll leave a lot of paint on my brush to purposefully make my brush strokes really thick and rounded. I'll use this dabbing motion that still allows for the dark pinks to shine through from the bottom. So some areas will be close together blobs, other areas will be very spread out. I'm really looking for those feathers on the birds that are lifted up just slightly so that they have a little bit of shadow beneath them and I keep the bottom area where it connects to that shadow very rounded. That's the rounded part. And just by leaving a lot of those dark pinks on the bottom, that creates our shadow. I left out a little bit of that dark pink right at the top of the head. You see that? I'll get that in a little bit. Just mixing up a little bit more for the left side, left birdie.
Now we mustn't forget to paint in the red feather just on the top of the right cockatoo. So I'm going to mix up a medium value red with white and permanent red, and I'm just going to fill that in. I want to let that dry so it doesn't just keep mixing in with my white. And we'll work on the beak and the feet. So for the feet, I actually want to just mix up a dark blue because that's what I'll use for the feeties. Some blue, phalo blue with some white and a little bit of black. So it's like a navy blue. Okay, and then with the detail brush, I'm going to go and fill those in. And this is a part where we want to work wet into wet. So you want to make sure that the next steps after this one, you can uh, do that while this is wet. Now, as we paint this, we're not going to paint in the claws. We're going to use black for that in a little bit. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just pull in some white into this. I'm going to get even smaller and I'm going to add some highlights on the top of it. So I'm just going to pull out this light, this highlight over top of each toe. And then I'll just go in with black and fill in those claws. Now I'm actually going to add a little bit more black into this blue, this navy blue, because it actually is pretty dark around the claws in between them and around the front of the, the foot. So like right around the claw itself and then in between the toes. Alright, we're going to continue on with this brush and our black because inside the mouth we're going to fill in with black and then we're also going to fill in the eyes with black. I want to make them look like they're smiling, so I'm going to pull up that smile a little bit. We're going to create another navy blue for the beak, the same exact colors basically that we used for the feet. 
If yours is all dried out, we used phthalo blue, a little bit of black, and white to create a navy blue. So we'll start with our dark blue, and then while it's wet, we'll add in the light blue and then the darks. And I'm just gonna work wet into wet again, so I'm gonna fill in the entire beak first, and then add the low lights and the highlights. That's okay if you go over the nostrils, we'll paint that in. All right, so I'm just gonna pull, I'm gonna grab my detail brush, make sure it's clean and damp. And I'm gonna go in with some white I'm just mixing that into that blue that we were just using. Oh dear. Now as we apply this, we're somewhat blending it in to the first layer of blue that we applied. And I'll add it to the top of the beak as well as the top of the bottom of the mouth. And then I'll go in with some black while that's wet. And I'll just blend in some of this really dark black along this part of the beak. Awesome. And we'll repeat that exact same thing on the left side. Start with my dark blue, fill in the entire beak, even the nostrils. And now I'll go in with my white, my light blue. And we have a few different highlights here. It's on the left and right sides of the beak. So I'm just doing it on the left side and then I'll pull it to the right side. And then it's also definitely down along the left side on the bottom. And now with the black. It's also below the beak too. And the nostrils we can just easily fill in. Oh, wait a minute, we need some black on the top part where that nostril is. So here we're gonna see a bit of a shadow Do I see it on the other beak? Yep. On the inside here, where a shadow is being created from the feathers. So, an easy way to make nostrils is just to use a brush like this and just do a little dot with our black. Now we still have to fill in that white area around the eye and the next color I'll make a light pink for that. Just more of this light pink. I'll mix it up with this color and then I'll outline it with this brush.
And we can do the same on the other eye, actually. See how it just wraps around? Oh yes, you'll see this come to life when we add the highlights next. That's what we'll do next. I'm gonna pull in some white into this even more. So we have like an extremely light white. Just like that. And now we're gonna add those brightest highlights. Oh, it's gonna come to life. The, these birds are gonna start talking to us. We're gonna feel like we're in the sunshine again. I don't know, I am pretty excited for fall weather though. Cold front coming in next week or in a few days and I am so excited. I just love the change of seasons, it's my favorite. Remember, we're adding those feathers, those rounded edges. Now remember, we're doing more dabs than we are filling in, okay? And then less is more. I got carried away myself and I found that I applied more of this color than I needed. So make sure you just take your time, slow down, and really look at where you see this light pink on the birds. Now there's some areas on this bird where we could go in and add some more of that dark red. So I'm just gonna mix up some red with some black and our burnt sienna. Okay, and now we're just gonna add some of those shadows right below this guy. Now while you have this, you can touch up any areas that maybe you added too much of your light pink. Okay. 
Now I know it can be very tricky. Value can be a hard thing to spot. So we have all different values of pink, red, and white in this parrot. But figuring out where to place those correct values can be, can be definitely hard. I find that if I can pinpoint the darkest areas, right next to that is going to be my next level of layer of color that's a little bit lighter. And then next to that is going to be my highlights, which is going to be even more lighter. Now, I know my English is phenomenal right now, but I'm trying to explain how I progress from my dark to light. It's slowly. So the more little slight changes in color that you have from dark to light, the better. And it's so easy to get carried away with that when we applied our medium pinks and our light pinks and our deep reds. And so that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to mix up those correct value of colors and place them so that it makes more sense. So for instance, for me on the left parrot, I need a bit more of my medium red or my medium dark pink to place right along the left side of the body. So I'm going to mix it up. It needs to be lighter than my dark red values, but darker than my highlights that I have on that bird. And it might take a little fiddling with, adding in a little bit more red if it's too light, or adding in a little bit more white if it's too dark. To really give this bird that feathery look, I'm going to outline the rounded part of the shadow being created by the feathers. All right, and I think what I want to do is I want to just give some more definition to these leaves. I want to just bring out those greens a little bit more. So I'm just going to create the same color just with my phthalo blue and my cadmium yellow. I think I might just bring this leaf down actually a little bit more than I have it. Now, I also want to use this green to richen up the greens on the left leaves. On the left side of the stem, that's where it's getting a little bit less light. Unlike the right side of the stem, that's where I'll apply this color.
Now we're going to put in a tree. And so this tree will go behind the first set of leaves, but in front of the second set of leaves on the left side. And we're going to use a medium flat brush for this, mixing up the colors black, raw sienna, and burnt sienna. And we'll just push down starting from behind the left parrot. Again, that's behind the first set of leaves in front of the second. And I'm just going to glide my brush up from bottom up. And then also I want to make sure that I can get it in behind this leaf. I'm using the corner of my flat brush to get this. And now we'll add highlights to that tree. Boy, my cup of water is so filled with brushes. I think I might have to clean up my water soon. All right, so just to get these highlights from the sunshine, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna add some more yellow. I'm gonna let that dry, but I'm gonna add some more yellow and orange and white to my sunshine just to give it just a little bit more extra brightness. And then I'll add some of that color into this one, a little sneaky way of highlighting this tree. And I'll just add this highlight along the right side where it's facing that sunshine. And I just wanna kinda of blend it in to that brown. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, maybe not quite as bright. All right, creatives, I really recommend you pause and step back and look at your painting. Not mine, but look at what your painting needs. This is where we can see what needs to be added, taken out, or adjusted. And in my painting, I'm going to add in a branch on the left side, upper part of the tree, using the same colors, just connecting it to the top part of the tree. Using that same sunny color that we used to highlight the left and right sides of the tree, we're going to use that to lighten up that branch.
So I think I just want to add one more leaf similar to this with this design right over here. I think I want to have it coming from behind this one. I'll, I'll grab a detail brush and I want to mix up phthalo blue and yellow just like we did before with this one to create that dark green. And instead of having it go up and out like this, I want to have it going down. So I'm just going to start about an inch or two down from the upper left hand side of our canvas and I'm just going to create a line down. And then I want to have them being, do you know how they're smaller up here and it gets water down here? I'm going to have it being smaller, closer to this cockatoo, and then wider. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll think I'll start wide and then work down. So here, this side would be out over here. So then I'm just going to bring it down along both sides and in. And I'll just keep pulling this down as it gets a little bit thinner towards the very end. Right now, I'll fill that in and then join them like we did here where we widened out those two sides. See how much depth we're creating by all these layers? It really helps it to look further away and more three-dimensional. I think we'll have a little bit of that leaf kind of coming out up here. And don't forget to bring it down around your canvas. And now I'll just widen out the center of it. Now while we have this green, let's just mix up some more and really add some more pigment, some more rich green to all these other leaves we've done while that dries before we add this lighter green design over top that one.
All right, so now I'm gonna add in more yellow to this green to create this lighter green and a little bit of white as well. And now we're gonna create the same kind of designs we did on this one over here. So first I wanna create that line in the center. I'm gonna bring it all the way from the bottom down. And these little designs that go in the same direction as that, that stem. Some that are connected, some that are more out on the outer part of the leaf. And I'm just going to add a few highlights to this one that I covered up. And then I'll go a little bit lighter, maybe even add a few lighter ones on this one too. I'll add some more yellow and white. And what I think, I want to do something fun to that sunshine. I don't know really what to do. I'm, I'm sort of thinking maybe rings around it, like some white and yellow rings or something of that sort. I'm going to mix up white and some yellow. And I'm going to just see what this looks like. Let's see what this does. If we were to add this ring around the sunshine... No, I kind of like it. Now for this part, you can either use regular orange or you can mix up your own orange like I am with cadmium yellow and permanent red. And first what we're going to do is fill in the center of the sunshine and then while that's wet, we're going to pull in some yellow and create a swirl going from the inside of the sun out. And then after that, we're going to just take regular white with a clean damp brush and just re-outline the outside of the sunshine.
And now we're really going to pull out these shapes. I'm going to mix up uh, raw sienna and white. We're going to again add more highlights to the wood branch. And I'm going to outline that ring once again, just really drawing attention to that knot. Now I will also add more highlights to a lot of the wood grain pattern that we've applied. Not all of them, but a few, especially on the left and right sides of the parrots. And I'll also incorporate some more raw sienna to balance that out. Sorry guys, I realized that I didn't light my candle, but I do that in just a little bit. All right, so now I wanna add a few more joiner colors to these parrots. So I'm gonna mix up more of my a medium pink. Not my darkest pink, but right there in the middle. Kinda of like this one right here. That's the perfect pink, and I think I got it. So this is where I really encourage you to step back and look at your painting. So not mine and not the reference photo, but just your painting and what it needs. All right, friends, we have reached the touch up phase of our painting, which means we're just repeating the same steps and making any adjustments, add ins or taking things out just to make it look like your own.
right friends, we have reached the end of our cockatoo painting tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed yourself. If you have any questions, just leave them down in the comment section below. Have a blessed day. Bye!